What is up everybody? It is Wick here. I am about to show you some bolos today, some things you can look for out in the wild. You may not know about some of these things are a bit deceiving in how much they're actually worth. It's been a couple months since I got one of these videos out. If you enjoy this type of video, make sure to hit that like button, share the video, subscribe, do all that stuff. As always, if the videos get views, I'll keep making them, but let's jump into it. So the first item I got for you today are these Davis wireless weather stations. Some of these are worth a lot of money pre-owned. Of course, if you find any of this stuff new, it's typically worth a lot more money, but we're gonna focus more on the pre-owned stuff. These weather stations, have value up into the hundreds. You can see just the little control box here, sold for $449. That's one of those things that could just be at a garage sale or a rummage sale. You don't really know what it is. It doesn't really look valuable because a lot of this weather stuff isn't valuable, but you buy it and you're pleasantly surprised, right? Some of these have like the little weather windmill things. I don't even know what they would be called. Uh, those are worth money too, 400, 400. You can see the price on these just stays pretty good, right? I'm sure there's some lower end models. Now I sold something similar to this. I found at Goodwill, I remember I got like $150. It sold very quickly. Uh, it could have been a Davis. I don't remember, it's been years, but that's what made me think of it. Um, I started trying to find uh, good weather setups like this and uh, it's just worth researching this kind of stuff, right? Because it's crazy how some of this basic stuff that you see at sales all the time. It's not worth anything, and then just a certain brand can really make a difference. You know, looking at this one right here, that looks like the one I sold, honestly, that I can remember, $199. So certainly keep an eye out for some of this stuff, even uh, some links for it. I don't, I don't know what that stuff is for. And I have some other stuff similar to this I wanna talk about in this video as well. Just selling the power supply and certain pieces that go with these sets. It's good to get a mental image of stuff. You see a lot of this kind of stuff in just bins of like old wires and totes at garage sales where the people's like, it's free, take it all, <laughs> right? And it's like, ah, I don't want any more wires and random power supplies, but some of this stuff is worth hundreds of dollars. It's worth knowing what to look for and keeping an eye out for this stuff. I don't know if I've talked about adult diapers in any of my videos, but I can remember in one of my videos, somebody's like, too bad there's no money in adult diapers. And I'm like, oh, there is actually. Some of these vintage adult diapers can sell for a lot of money. And you're looking at some of these attends selling for hundreds of dollars for a new pack. And I've talked about the vintage soap and selling that for lots of money. Uh, people are looking for certain brands. Now the adult diapers, I think there's some weird stuff that goes on with that, right? But there's probably people that buy them to use for the actual purpose that, you know, they're meant to be used. But you see this stuff all the time at Goodwill and thrift stores, uh, state sales. If you see any old adult diapers, vintage, you're getting them cheap. I would just buy them, right? Like if they're a dollar at an estate sale or something, just buy them if they're from the 90s. Uh, assurance, some of these still 215, uh, 200, 200, 150. As you keep scrolling, and these are going to be new, right? Like, I don't don't know how they would sell. I don't even know if you're allowed to sell these pre-owned. Obviously not. You can't sell a used diaper on eBay. I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of money in it if you could, uh, but it's definitely not allowed and that's probably a good thing. So even if you find some of these that are still like $86, $90 for some of these, why not pick them up, right? I've sold some for like $50 before, so uh, they do sell if you can find the right ones, but yeah, they're always worth looking up. So oddly enough, I was editing this video and I started thinking to myself, what about kids diapers, just normal baby diapers? Do any of those hold some value? So I looked them up real quick and sure enough, wow, they do. So I wanted to throw those diapers in this video as well. I don't watch a whole lot of reseller content on YouTube, so I don't know if these are being talked about a lot or what. I've never seen children's diapers being talked about, but kind of surprised, better than adult diapers. However, I don't see baby diapers as much in thrift stores. I have seen them before, so probably worth picking up if you see any vintage or old ones. I'm sure there's certain ones. And again, I don't know why people is paying this much. I don't know if some of these comps are correct, like the Pampers here for 9,000. Who knows, it's showing that it's sold. If someone's paying close to $10,000 to put diapers on, the, on their kids uh, because it's a certain brand, well, you got money, that's all I can say. I imagine maybe people collect this kind of stuff. I don't know, I honestly don't know. Now here's some vintage lots that sold for 3,000. These are probably more realistic in price, I would guess. Uh, but if we keep scrolling a little bit, you do see some decent comps, 13 bids. That's probably, you know, real. Of course, you got Gucci diaper bags <laughs> are going to be worth money. 
Uh, but yeah, some of these just over a grand for some loves, some huggies, huggies for him. If anyone has any insight on why people are paying this much for diapers, what they're used for, I would love to know. But there's so many comps here that you can see there is actual value, like maybe not $9,000, but definitely real value. Unless those diapers are just really rare. Like Here's a pair of Pokemon diapers, um, $995. Again, I don't think it's something that you can sell pre-owned. Maybe if the bags tore or something, I see a new other there. Uh, but yeah, those are really vintage, 1989. I would imagine diaper technology has come a long way too. So I don't know. <laughs> uh, a lot of people's like, I like the old school furniture. Everything was built better back then. Was, was diapers built better back then? I don't know. I kind of feel like technology and science has maybe found a way to make them better. At least I would hope. More diaper bags. But yeah, just just want to throw this in here real quick uh, before I released the video or finish it, finished editing it. Uh, just some interesting stuff with diapers in general brand new sealed vintage diapers of any kind keep an eye out for them it's been a great year for me selling books I want to talk about some of these star wars books many star wars books just aren't worth picking up these star wars junior jedi knight books and uh young jedi academy books hold a lot of value i've so sold these before uh, for good profit you typically get around 50 60 dollars for a book in good condition and you can see here like three books sold for 170 there's a set of the young jedi knight books selling for 148 books are one of those things that you see absolutely everywhere and 90% of them aren't going to be worth reselling. So it's good to have an idea of some of the stuff that does <laughs> resell and I've talked about a lot in previous videos. So you can always check out my older videos to see some of the great things I've talked about. And um, a lot of people, when I make these videos, they end up finding the stuff the next day. I get messages all the time uh, where people are finding this stuff. So it's definitely out there. It's desirable. Young Star Wars Jedi Academy books. So here's a brand I wasn't exactly familiar with. It's called All Saints. And I'm always keeping an eye out because I see all kinds of leather jackets all the time. Most of them aren't worth picking up. They have all kinds of weird brands, right? And at rummage sales, I want to be able to spot some good stuff. And sometimes you can just tell with leather jackets by touching them. They're probably worth it. Other times, it's like, eh, it just seems like every other leather jacket that doesn't sell on eBay very well. All Saints seems to be a good leather jacket. Looks like they make some other types of jackets. I'm sure other types of clothing, but I was focusing more on the leather jackets here. You see pre-owned up into you know, three to $500 we're seeing. So even at the low ends, I'm sure you're still getting, you know, 80 to a hundred dollars, right? Uh, if we keep scrolling, you can see as it goes down in value, this stuff is holding value. And of course, new, it's going to be a lot of money if you find one new with tags usually. And I believe this is a brand that's more common in Europe, maybe the UK. So it is a bit more, you know, rare to find over here in the United States, uh, but still plenty of this kind of stuff around. Looks like a lot of motorcycle jackets. Here's a, a leather dress. Now I don't, you know, look at women's clothes very often, but now that I have this in my brain, if I'm at a rummage cell, I see a leather dress. I'm like, oh, what brand is this? It's All Saints. I should pro probably pick it up, right? And that's the point of these videos is just to make yourself more aware. You'd be surprised that once you see something like this, how it will stick in your brain and how it will stick out among everything else you're looking at at a sale. Usually, I mean, sometimes I stare at something and I, I still don't see it, even though I've talked about it. It happens. But All Saints jackets, a great thing to watch for. I believe in the last video I talked about maybe Babysitter Club books, Goosebump books, but there's also Animorph books. And the complete set of this would be 54 books. If you happen to find the complete set, you're looking at over $500 or right around $500 in some cases, depending on condition. These books have like, I don't know, you're going to have like weird animals and stuff. On them. I don't, I can barely remember Animorphs. I was never into this. It's kind of like Goosebumps, I believe, in the sense that it's around that time period. Uh, a little bit later but people are buying them like even if you don't find the complete set uh, you can obviously do lots like i've never found a complete set of goosebumps books but i just picked up 42 i can still sell 42 goosebumps books for about 100 bucks paid 15 dollars for them so that's that's a very worth it right of course if you see something like this at you know goodwill where they charge three dollars for a paperback they're not going to be probably worth picking up you know 20 of them because you'll be paying so much money but at garage sales and places where they just throw them all in a box and sell them for five or ten bucks you make some quick money here's something that's pretty cool some of these vintage uh winnie the pooh play sets these tree houses i actually just picked up one of these um 
few days ago, and I'm pretty proud of myself because I saw it at a sale, and I said to myself, Winnie the Pooh uh, looks older. Like, this could be something um, based on what I know about some other toys. So I just whipped out my phone, did a Google lens photo of it real quick, and saw some exciting stuff. I paid $10 for it. It had some figures and everything. They sell pretty good, uh, pre-owned even. Now mine, I don't think, has as much pieces as some of this stuff. So I'll probably get somewhere between like $60, $75 for it. But still, to spot this stuff amongst all the other toys that you see at rummage sales or thrift stores, it's just good to know, right, that this particular set will sell a lot more than you know some other Fisher Price thing that looks the same and this isn't even Fisher Price or maybe it is uh, maybe Fisher Price did make this I'm seeing some Fisher Price in the title but I'm not 100% sure it's Fisher Price but I find like a lot of these weird play sets that are Winnie the Pooh or some other property like IP property uh, a lot of times especially if they're vintage can be pretty good here's some Winnie the Pooh Polly Pocket stuff of course that's going to be worth some money even if you're not finding a complete set of course you can part this stuff out you're probably getting it cheap wherever you're buying it so yeah not bad at all some good profit if you can find it let's talk about some trump stuff i recently picked up this board game at a rummage sale i paid a dollar for it I just bought it blind because i thought it could be worth it when I looked it up, I was like, eh, it looks like it's selling for 15, 20 bucks. You know, I'll make profit on it. Two or three weeks went by, and of course there was the assassination attempt. Now, a lot of this stuff is going up in value. Um, it's doubled in price, pre-owned. I put mine on there for $40 plus shipping. I'm seeing them sell for around there. Uh, there's not as many listed as there are comps for them. Uh, they've sold a lot more. And I think as we get closer to the election, all of this stuff's just going to keep going up in value. So if you got Trump stuff in your death pile, now's the time to get it listed. I think whether, you know, he wins the election or loses the election, it's going to start dropping off in value after that. You can see some of these brand new are selling for around $100 sealed. Um, I bet there's probably not many at that price anymore listed on eBay. People's probably buying them out. Uh, but if you get down here, a lot of them brand new, people are buying them quickly. But finally we get down here to some pre-owned ones. And there's one that sold for $40, $25 shipping. Uh, here's one that sold for even 48. Unfortunately, mine has a little bit of box damage, so I might've priced it a bit more, but I do expect it to sell at any point, right? Um, Cause you're seeing some of these selling for $50 in good condition. So I was gonna add a bunch of Trump stuff on here, but I, I think you get the point if you see something Trump, but I have one more Trump item. And I wanted to talk about this because this could be something that Goodwill just throws with the Halloween stuff this year or any thrift stores. Or of course you can see it at a garage sale. It's just a, a Trump hat. It's rare. It's a Halloween hat. Got like a jack-o'-lantern design on it. But some of the prices are pretty high. Now, the ones that are really high up here, uh, I see like a box. I don't know. That might be for a bunch of them. I mean, that one's just showing one. I, I think they would put that in the title if it was for more than one. But you can see they hold some pretty good value, you know. So if you see uh, a hat that looks like this, check the tag. I don't know what the tag looks like. I haven't researched it that much, but I'm sure there's a tag on it where it can be identified. I don't know anything about it. You know, I don't follow politics at all. So I don't know where this hat came from or why it even exists. I just kind of saw it here when I was looking up that board game and I was like, oh, that's interesting. Maybe I should put that in a video. And of course there are some other Trump hats, uh, some vintage ones that do hold some value but that weird halloween one i found it interesting just wanted to put it in a video i talked about some zippo lighters of course in a, a video a while back but i didn't talk about these cool jet lighters uh from the 40s and 50s have like a flame that shoots from them they're kind of neat you can kind of see it in that picture there but they have value I've, I've mentioned you know lighters that are old and vintage and unique usually worth checking if you see them at a garage sale or something honestly it's not a category i'm that skilled in because I don't see a lot of Zippo lighters at garage sales or anything, right? I usually see them at like antique shows and places, uh, flea markets where people have already priced them you know, too high. But I thought I would mention that uh, $225 for some of these selling. There's some good pictures <laughs> of them. Pretty interesting, would be a pretty cool find. There's, there's different styles of them. And just as a quick refresher, these Marlboro lighters, uh, vintage, some of them are worth lots of money, hundreds of dollars. You see the Marlboro stuff out there. A lot of it's not worth a whole lot. It was mass produced. Uh, some of these Zippo lighters though, great money. So don't forget to keep an eye out for those as well. Here's something that's kind of interesting. I don't know how much you're going to see this out in the wild, but maybe you see it at a flea market or at some sort of, you know, old business sale or something. I don't know. But some of these vintage like shopping carts or shopping hand baskets, really, this one's from Ames, uh, $350. And you 
you know, people's into carrying their own bags and stuff to stores and using those to shop with. And I noticed a trend where people are buying the, the like woven ba- baskets, like um, Longa Burger and stuff like that. So um, a lot of this stuff I think is gonna keep some value. Of course, baskets, different ones are worth money. I know, I don't know exactly what to look for. I see a lot of people at rummage sales grabbing baskets like this. They're probably making a killing, right? Some of the shopping baskets, here's a Bed Bath & Beyond. that sold for $100, kind of interesting. A Kmart that sold for 100. I guess some Target ones, they sold for 30 dollars but $89 shipping is, I guess, why they sold for that much. Some Kmart Toys R Us would be a good one to find, $75. So just kind of a, a weird thing to keep an eye out for, right? Uh, make a little bit of money if you happen to see one. Maybe you can get it cheap. So earlier in the video, I was talking about power supplies and stuff like that. If you caught the video where I got the Teddy Ruxpin and the Grubby in the box with all that other stuff for $7 at the rummage sale, one of my favorite finds of all time. I mentioned the cords. The cord alone here will sell for $70. It's pretty easy to tell most of the time because there's a tag on it uh, that indicates what it is. You can see some of these, the tag has been removed. But if you look at kind of the way the cord looks, you can kind of identify the shape of it and everything and it makes some pretty good money on the cord. Or if you see like a grubby and somebody's got a price $20 and it's not in good shape, it's dirty, but the cord's plugged in there. Well, you know, you can make some good money on that, right? But you see 65, 70, very consistent with the cord prices. Here's you know, one with the, the tag on it. Uh, it will say World of Wonder, I think, on the tag, which is the company that made it. But people want the original stuff. I don't know if, if any remakes would even work with it, but something to definitely keep an eye out for. And then one more power supply item. Uh, these Fisher Price Bigfoots, I've picked them up in the past, but there's a charger that usually is supposed to go with them. The charger is kind of hard to find. And you can see here, it's selling for like 75, 80 bucks just for the charger. So again, if you see these out in the wild, you see them fairly often, or at least I have. And you see the charger with it, you know, you can get just a good amount of money with the charger. It might just be worth buying it, throwing the Bigfoot away and selling the charger, right? Because you can look at this one that sold. I don't know why it's showing multiples, if it's even selling or what, but one sold for $55 with shipping and it has the charger with it. You know, again, the charger alone is selling for more than what pretty much the whole Bigfoot sold for. That happens a lot. So yeah, you know, again, power supplies, focus on them. Kind of learn what to look for because they're, they're all over the place and you just never know where you're going to find one that's worth a lot of money. There it is, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Before you go, if you could hit that like button for me, I really appreciate it. Of course, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok, flipping underscore junk. And this has been Wick. Till next time.